Crowley's philosophy was fundamentally New Age. He propounded New Age ideas such as the following, quote, Happiness lies within oneself. Every man and every woman is a star, and the infinite unity is our refuge, since if our consciousness be in that unity, we shall care nothing for the friction of its component parts, and our light is the inmost point of illuminated consciousness. He believed that through meditation, quote, the consciousness of the many may be melted to that of the one, leading to the quote, expansion of consciousness to that of the infinite, which as I previously cited, was exactly how Alice Bailey defined the New Age initiation process. This is a clear sign that occultism, Satanism, and the New Age movement are part of the same spiritual phenomenon. And I love what you said about the evolution of the next consciousness. What's evolving is, is consciousness. Consciousness is the thing that's evolving and it expands in every way it can. We are also granted the gift of experiencing an expansion within our own consciousness. Through the expansion of consciousness. We are moving away from this separation consciousness and moving into unity, oneness consciousness. The solar flares, the, the vibrational frequency is actually awakening all of us and we're awakening as one. Because you are connected in consciousness to everybody. We need to come together in mutual acknowledgement that we're all the same consciousness having different experiences. The change consciousness is about oneness, unity of everything. Alice Bailey made it very clear that occultism was the source for her view of the Christ, and she believed that this New Age occult Christ would soon overthrow the Jesus of traditional Christianity. Quote, it can be expected that the Orthodox Christian will at first reject the theories about the Christ which occultism presents. At the same time, this same Orthodox Christian will find it increasingly difficult to induce the intelligent masses of people to accept the impossible deity and the feeble Christ which historical Christianity has endorsed. Occultism presents a Christ who is present and living, who is known to those who follow him, who is a strong and able executive and not a sweet and sentimental sufferer, who has never left us but who has worked for 2,000 years through the medium of his disciples, the inspired men and women of all faiths, all religions, and all religious persuasions, who sees divinity in them all and who comprehends the techniques of the evolutionary development of the human consciousness. These ideas the intelligent public can and will accept. Then the picture of a Christ demanding a unique position to the exclusion of all other sons of God will fade out in the wonder of the true apostolic succession in which many sons of God on different rays of differing nationalities and with varying missions are to be seen historically leading humanity along the path of divine unfoldment and nearer to God, the source. Occult or esoteric means that which is hidden or secret and refers to knowledge only known to the initiated. Occult teachings are usually associated with the idea of spiritual awakening, which is a very popular idea in the New Age. One becomes awakened when they have learned a hidden truth about the world and themselves, and thus they become initiated into the secrets or mysteries of the ages. We're moving into this new age of Aquarius, and it's going to be an awakening for everyone again. It's sort of an awakening that happens in consciousness. And I think that there is a more of an awakening. This great awakening is just about to take place. It is the awakening of the Christ principle in humanity. You're From expanding. I was, I was expanding in more of a positive awakening. direction. Yeah. yeah. There has been an awakening. Mankind's first awakening, according to the occult, occurred in the Garden of Eden, when the serpent revealed a great mystery to Eve that God had kept hidden from her, that she could become like God if she partook of the Tree of Knowledge. This was the first initiation. By eating of the Tree of Knowledge, Eve was initiated into the mysteries. She discovered her true identity and became God. This has been the foundational teaching in the occult and mystery schools for centuries that in the Garden of Eden, the serpent was the arbiter of mankind's initiation into godhood and imparted the ageless wisdom. This is what Madame Blavatsky meant when she stated that Satan, the serpent of Genesis, is the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind, and that Satan can only be regarded in the light of his savior. Aleister Crowley similarly stated, this serpent, Satan, is not the enemy of man, but he who made gods of our race, knowing good and evil. 
he bade know thyself and taught initiation. Alice Bailey also confirmed that the roots of initiation are found in the Garden of Eden and the serpent's temptation to eat of the Tree of Knowledge. Quote, initiation leads to the cave where the secret of good and evil is revealed. This explains how the ancient mysteries or ageless wisdom has retained the same core body of teachings through the centuries, because they have descended from the same spiritual father, the serpent. This is why the mystery schools, which are the ancient ancestor religion of today's New Age movement, worship the serpent as the bringer of divine wisdom. In Isis Unveiled, Madame Blavatsky confirmed that the serpent was the supreme god of the mystery schools. Quote, the Hierophants, moreover, of Egypt as of Babylon, generally style themselves the sons of the serpent god, or sons of the dragon, because in the mysteries, the serpent was the symbol of wisdom and immortality. Manly P. Hall, a 33rd degree Freemason and one of the most well-known experts on ancient and esoteric wisdom, also confirms the Christ-like importance of the serpent in the mystery schools. Quote, the initiates of the mysteries were often referred to as serpents, and their wisdom was considered analogous to the divinely inspired power of the snake. Among nearly all these ancient peoples, the serpent was accepted as the symbol for wisdom or salvation. Notwithstanding statements to the contrary, the serpent is the symbol and prototype of the universal savior, who redeems the world by giving creation the knowledge of itself and the realization of good and evil. The accepted theory that the serpent is evil cannot be substantiated. It is the symbol of the reincarnation, which was common to many of the ancient mystery schools. What's interesting is that the Bible actually prophesies the rise of the mystery schools, which consist of the serpent's spiritual offspring or followers. As the Bible makes clear, the offspring of the serpent would be engaged in a long and hostile spiritual war with God's Son, the true Messiah sent to undo the damage done by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, almost immediately after Adam and Eve's encounter with the serpent and their subsequent betrayal of God's command, God foretells the coming of the Messiah and the ensuing conflict that would arise between the Messiah and the serpent's offspring. Speaking to Satan, God says in Genesis 3.15, quote, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He, that is Jesus Christ, will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This one verse explains centuries of spiritual war between the mystery schools and those who follow the God of the Bible. And it also implies that these are really the only two types of people in the world, those who follow the God of the Bible and those who follow the serpent. It also makes perfect sense of why occultists like Alice Bailey, being the offspring of the serpent, consistently take issue with the Jesus Christ of the New Testament, and why the mystery schools and Christians have for so long battled over who the true Savior is. Also, Satan, in an obvious attempt to discredit the true Jesus Christ and lead people away from true salvation, has created his own occult or Aquarian Jesus, who has supposedly been suppressed by Bible-believing fundamentalist Christians. This is Spiritual Warfare 101, and it is this occult Christ whom Alice Bailey and the Lucius Trust claim is soon returning. According to the Bible, Adam and Eve's partaking of the Tree of Knowledge was a disastrous event that led to mankind's fall into sin and separation from God. Yet the occult New Age, interpreting the event from the other side, claims Adam and Eve's encounter with the serpent was a revolution in mankind's development toward higher consciousness. Rather than living in paradise as the Bible claims, Adam and Eve were imprisoned by Jehovah, spiritually unconscious, stuck living a mere animal existence, and the serpent came to liberate them with the gift of divine consciousness. The teaching of the serpent as the great initiator and savior of mankind is currently gaining worldwide acceptance through the New Age movement, which ultimately aims to precipitate the next Garden of Eden event by helping humanity ascend the ladder of spiritual evolution and unlocking the next level of consciousness.